how does five transcend rationality and uh, 3D consciousness? And that's the question for today. It's question for number 139 on the list of the 144 fractal faculties of the tree of life. If you'd like to get a full listing of all 144 of those fractal faculties, just leave your name and email in the comment section. I will send that out to you for free. Uh, it's a good guide just to kind of get you up to speed uh, so you are able to benefit from these videos um, because you'll be able to kind of see all of them in front of you. Uh, as you watch just one at a time, then you can compare and contrast, you can refer back, you can uh, see the big picture, and uh, it's just like a couple sentences on each one of the 144. So it, uh, it kind of summarizes each one. And that's for free. So just put your name and email in the comment section. Uh, if you'd like to... Um, you can watch a video from me uh, on YouTube called Tree of Life and Introduction. And that one is just 10 minutes long and it should be able to kind of get you through all uh, 144 of these videos, just give you enough background so that you can follow along a little bit better with the 144 videos. If you wanna go a little bit deeper than that, or a lot deeper than that, you can spend 10 bucks, send it to my Cash App or Venmo listed in the description, and I'll send you a copy of my book called Tree of Life. Uh, it's called The Mass Tree. It's an introduction to the Tree of Life. Uh, and yeah, just 10 bucks to my Cash App and Venmo, I'll send that out to you. All right, now today we're looking at 139, and um, here is the tree. Now, basically, for these purposes, the Tree of Life is a map of our consciousness. And each one of the circles or spheres on the tree is an aspect of our consciousness or a um, potential of our consciousness, a faculty of our consciousness, an ability of our consciousness. And uh, there are 12 of them that are numbered from 10 to 0 plus the abyss here. For the purposes of number 139, we are in the zero. So we're above the tree, and the faculty of consciousness, uh, maybe that's a misnomer for the zero sphere, but um, the uh, faculty that is related to the zero sphere really has to do with the lack of consciousness or the lack of everything, because the zero corresponds to nothing, it corresponds to nothingness. It's a total mystery. Um, it is not part of the universe. So we do not have any kind of direct access to this zero sphere. The only access at all that we have is uh, th basically through the one. The one is the all. The one is everything. The one is the whole universe. Uh, it, we perceive the one as our deepest center, uh, our higher self or our God particle at the, at the deepest center of our being. Um, and this one is the all, but its counterpart is the zero, which is the none or, you know, the lack. And um, there is no zero in the universe. So the zero is not part of the universe, but the zero is part of the creator. Uh, so it is part of the one, but it is not part of the universe. So you can think of it as um, the part of the creator that the creator reserves for itself or the creator's private life that you know we're not privy to. We see the creator when it's in public and the universe, but when it is you know done working for the day or whatever maybe this is its rest period on uh, day on the seventh day then um we have uh nothing it's it's not part of the universe so it it leaves the universe uh and uh an analogy on this 
uh, similar analogy would be like our non-REM sleeping. Um, when we're not sleeping and not dreaming, we are out, you know, out cold. But uh, even though we do not really experience that state, we wake up and feel replenished. So it's a replenishing state, even though we don't experience it. When we wake up, we say, ah, that was a great sleep. You know, I got a lot of non-REM sleep, um, you know, a lot of deep, deep sleep. So you can think of it also as kind of a deep sleep state. Okay, now the, the, uh, now it also corresponds to numbers. Uh, and it corresponds to kind of like the, the rules of the game. The rules of the game were already written before the game started. And so it's kind of like the, the unwritten rules of the game. Um, and you can think of it in terms of the numbers. Uh, the numbers are perfect. Uh, they always work out. The principles of arithmetic always work out. Uh, just like in the first sphere where the principles of geometry always work out. These are the perfect sciences. These are the, and this is why you can really think uh, legitimately think that the universe itself, uh, the creator of the universe, is numbers and geometry. Not like that you can represent them with numbers and geometry, but that it literally, they literally are numbers and geometry. Uh, and then rounding out the quadrivium here, we have music at the third sphere, and music and sacred music and astronomy and astrology here at the second sphere. That's the ancient quadrivium, uh, you know, music, ge uh, music, astronomy, geometry, and arithmetic. Okay, now the, the zero sphere is just one of our 12 faculties of consciousness. But to get from 12 faculties to 144, what we're basically doing is we're taking the tree of life to the second power. And that 12 times 12 is 144. So what, we, what that looks like uh, graphically is that we take the whole tree, we shrink it down to the size of just one sphere, and we apply it to each one of the spheres. So we've got, you know, we break this down into 12. We break this down into 12. We break this down into 12, you know, 12 mini faculties or fractal faculties um, or fractional faculties. So when we add it all up, 12 plus 12 plus 12 and so on, we end up with 144 fractal faculties. And so when this is applied to the zero sphere, you know, Within the zero sphere, there's a mini zero sphere, a mini first sphere, a mini second sphere, a mini third sphere, and so on. Um, and for number 139, what we're looking at is we're looking at the mini fifth sphere within this overall zero sphere. So now the fifth sphere, if you remember, corresponds to um, our sense of justice. That is the faculty of consciousness that the fifth sphere represents. Our sense of justice, our sense of right and wrong, our sense of fairness. And it's summed up in the law of karma. Uh, as you sow, so shall you reap. Uh, what comes around goes around. And uh, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And the uh, karma is generally thought of as being a negative thing, like a punishment. But if you are you know, paying attention, which is a sixth sphere thing, if you're paying attention at the sixth sphere, then karma can become your friend because it's giving you honest feedback on your behavior. And so if you take the, it as honest feedback as opposed to as punishment, you can learn from your karma and karma becomes your greatest teacher and friend because it teaches you how to align yourself with you know, the actual forces of the universe that are controlling things. So the fifth sphere 
is really the enforcement of the natural law, um, which is also, you call it karma, our sense of justice, our sense of fairness. So this, but it is also strictly speaking here at the zero sphere, it's also the number five. Okay, so that is uh, what we have here for number 139. We have the overall zero sphere, the nothingness, and then we have five, the number five, and our sense of justice. Um, so number 139, after the flip, five stars, five fingers and toes, 3D to 5D. Stage number 139 is about five, the square root of five and phi, P-H-I coming from a higher dimension. The pyramid is derived from five balls. Phi is derived from the square root of five. Phi plus its reciprocal equals the square root of five. The square root of five comes from a two to one ratio. The two to one right angle has a hypotenuse of the square root of five. The pentagon and the five-pointed star inscribe inside it, inscribed inside it, the, the star that's inscribed inside the pentagon, the regular pentagon, embeds phi. Uh, and, the square, and the square of phi, the cube of phi, uh, as well as its zero power, which is one. Or any four powers of phi. The Fibonacci sequence and its counterpart, uh, the phi power series, co converge on the phi ratio, perpetually replicating itself. And the R sequence, uh, which is the uh, counterpart to the Fibonacci sequence, uh, that instead of beginning with um, 1, 1, it begins with 2, 1. Uh, and the R sequence converges on the phi power series. The fifth finger or thumb gives us a grip like no other. Thumbs up gives us, gives a balance to the other four. Harmonically, five is out of phase with four, moving in the opposite direction. In harmonics, Five is negative four. Since we have a grip, nothing that happens has the inherent power to cause a reaction or an effect. This is inner peace, having a grip, because one is secure in the womb of the Creator. We recognize that whatever, however, chaotic things are, ultimately, this is the plan of the Creator. And so we're able to have inner peace. Uh, we have a grip. Happiness or inner peace is the ability to remain at peace no matter what is happening. An independent peace seen in the five power series and in the fingers and toes, we have a firm grip, the five fingers and toes. All right, that's number 139, uh, which is the fifth fractal of the zero sphere. Uh, five stars, five fingers and toes. And we'll have more to say about that as we move along. But uh, for now, uh, again, if you'd like to get a free copy of my uh, guide to the 144 fractal faculties of the Tree of Life, just click the link or actually just put your name and uh, email address in the comment section. And I'll send that off to you for free. Uh, then you can also um, buy my book for 10 bucks uh, to Venmo and Cash App listed in the description. And that's called The Mass Tree. It's about 65 pages on uh, an introduction to the tree of life, a longer introduction 
to the Tree of Life. And uh, you can also uh, donate to me directly through Cash App and Venmo. Um, I, you know, uh, quantities other than $10 then I won't send you a copy of my book. Uh, or maybe if it's anything more than $10, then I will send that to you. Um, stay tuned on this channel. For tomorrow, we'll be uh, talking about number 140 on, of the 144 fractal faculties. So stay alert for that. Uh, there will be other uh, subjects uh, being coming up here starting next week on this channel. And now that we uh, are almost done with the 144, we've, uh, you know, when we do get done, we will have laid the foundation for future learning on this channel. Um, Tree of Life is what kind of grounds the whole, whole program, uh, the whole curriculum. And then uh, once we kind of have a fluency and an automaticity with the tree of life, then we can embark on some of these other subjects, which uh, if we didn't have that tree of life, the other subjects would be very difficult. But if we have the tree of life as a, as a base, then these subjects become a, a lot easier, a lot easier to understand, a lot easier to remember, a lot easier to prioritize. All right. So thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you very soon. Have a great day.